guys in Dragor, and he'll be thanking them. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, we just have a, a few quick numbers about the networking stuff. Uh, we had about 70 down and about 70 up for the total bandwidth. Uh, we peaked at about 50 to 60 down during the con, so that was pretty good. Um, megabits. Yes, megabits. Um, we, uh, we generally had about 300 to 400 people on the wireless. wireless. We had uh, about 450, 500 peak. Uh, if you are on 2.4, it sucks to be you. If you are on 5 gigahertz, it ran great because uh, we had uh, 300 people in one room on three channels. <laughs> um, uh, our uplink was uh, from Rainbow, so it's why Max Dish is aimed at Times Square. Uh, NAC once again gave us uh, IP space and bandwidth, so I hope everybody noticed you were given uh, routable real IPs on the internet. So, hooray for that. Uh, also, it wouldn't have been possible without all the network volunteers we had, so uh, um, Alex and Werewolf and, uh, and Andrew, and uh, of course, I'm going to forget and be an asshole up here, so. <laughs> um, uh, Pyro organized everything. Uh, Bruce came down and helped. We had, uh, we had great people. It wouldn't have been possible without them. Uh, it wouldn't have been possible without NAC and Rainbow, and I uh, hope everybody enjoyed having network access. Short and sweet. Everybody have a good con. Have a safe trip home. And, and just to get this out of the way, um, before we start, don't ride a Segway without a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I'm, I'm fine, everything's fine. Sorry I missed most of today, I was sleeping, but that was great. Um, next up, we have Bernie, who's going to be introducing a special guest from the EFF. Bernie, are you ready to go? Yeah. Okay, round of applause for Bernie and the EFF. You probably noticed that uh, the Electronic Frontier Foundation had uh, done several talks here, and they had a table downstairs. There were nine separate people from EFF came here, lawyers and a lot of staffers came. Uh, Marsha Hoffman, one of the attorneys, gave a great talk. Marsha, you want to come up here for a second? There she is. Um, Marsha just wants to talk just a, just a minute about, uh, about her impressions of this conference and how, uh, how we all relate to EFF. And, vice versa. So hi there. I'm not going to take up much time. I know the opening ceremonies are long, but I um, wanted to take an opportunity to thank uh, 2600 and all of you for um, your incredible support uh, during this conference. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious, how many of you were here at the very first Hope Conference? Right here. Right here. <laughs> yeah, not, not a whole lot of you. I, I don't know how many in this crowd know this, but um, EFF and, and 2600 actually have a really long history. Uh, there was a very historic and important court case uh, more than a decade ago in which Emanuel and t the folks at 2600 actually um, fought what turned out to be the first major constitutional challenge to the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, and EFF supported them in that, and that was um, a really important case that um, didn't turn out as well as it could have, in our opinion, but it inspired a lot of people, including me, uh, for example, to you know, want to continue working on these issues and, and making sure that um, the right to publish code and have robust uh, free expression and you know, ensure that intellectual property laws don't um, impede the ability of all of you to do really important work, stay strong. So um, we have a special gift, actually, for Emmanuel. Is, is he here? Emmanuel. We wanted to thank you for your support, and um, we, we really appreciate it. We have a, a poster here um, from EFF signed by the staff for you. And if you guys have not yet donated to these folks, remember, a lot of us wouldn't be walking the streets now were it not for their efforts uh, to uh, subvert these draconian laws that are coming down the pike. So EFF.org, donate what you can.
And I, I, I really want to thank you, you all as well. My, my colleagues from EFF, they're all back there somewhere, and they wanted to thank you as well. They're, they're standing back there. We've really been overwhelmed by your support at this conference, and we look forward to continuing to make sure and fight for your rights to do the awesome, awesome things that you do. So thank you very much. All right, up next, we have a special guest performer. We'll be right here. Yeah. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the closing ceremony. Networking class. That's what you are. I hope you see yourself as the networking class of the 21st century. We are in the so-called United States of America. It's a fringe country. Comparable in a way to my home country, yeah? Uh, I'm not talking about Canada. I don't even know if that really exists, yeah? Uh, Canada doesn't even have its own country code. It's plus one, you know? It, uh, what, what is this? Uh, no. Yes. Uh, it's a world of laughter. It's a world of tears. It's a world of hopes and the world of fears. There's so much that we share that it's time we are there. It's a small world <laughs> after all. Yes, yes, thank you. Yes. It is good to see so many intelligent people here who will understand my cultural references. It took me a long time to learn all of these things. Yes, my name is Commissar Nikita Perostek Kruzov, and I am uh, making an announcement. It's not very long, but uh, I'll try my best. Hackers. Hackers out there, and hackresses, ha ha I don't know what the female form of hackers is, hackresses. Uh, many of you think that you are anarchists, yeah? But now I tell you what you really are. Most of you who think anarchists are actually stupid libertarians, yes. Uh, and you're too stupid to see the difference. But I can see it, and in your heart, you also know it. It's not that you're walking around like Jello Biafra, but you're actually Ron Paul, and that's something really bad. Yeah. So, uh, yes, that's what I think about that. I spit on it. I spit on libertarians as much as... Uh, but Yes, class war, just do it. Uh, the Communist Party of my home country, Soviet Unterzegersdorf, uh, we are celebrating our 67th anniversary with this uh, clip art, okay? Uh, this is our border. Uh, uh, this is a good friend of mine. Uh, the, the, it doesn't work, the, the pointer doesn't work, whatever. Uh, this is uh, Europe. You might have heard of that. Uh, this is Austria. You might have heard of that too. It's known for uh, music and mass murder. Uh, and uh, inside of Austria, there is Soviet Unterzegersdorf. We have a testing facility according to Sol 2 Treaty. Uh, agricultural sector, the core de Woods, it's all on the map. Yeah? <laughs> Soviet Unterzegersdorf is real, uh, motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> But we lack several things. We lack resources, we lack inhabitants, 
we're like a 100, uh, no, 1500 like this, but stagnating, yeah? Uh, we lack space and we lack disk space, yeah? <laughs> That's in a certain way that we want to reach out to you. Our country is a proud country. We reach into the future of the utopia we all long for, but to do that, in fact, we're the first country who uh, will start uh, a Kickstarter. Uh, <laughs> You can really check it out. Uh, I would not recommend paying with credit card at this location. Uh, but we want to make the future happen with your filthy Western money, yeah? So, uh, free market wankers, we need you, yeah. <laughs> the, it, we, I even did this in a, a, a real font, so it's easier to read. Uh, okay, yeah. Good. Americans. Americans have a couple of problems, yeah? First of all, uh, corn is in everything. And that, that is kind of like a, a travesty of the concept of subsidies, I have to say, yeah? Uh, so, Americans have problems with corn. They have problems with uh, uh, youth, you, uh, the youth, yeah? Like uh, youth, uh, I don't know, youth, youth prostitution and stuff like that. Uh, uh, they have uh, problems with the past, like uh, Hiroshima, but also uh, with stuff like uh, Free Willy 2. Yeah? <laughs> And the problem of the hacker scene is, is you're getting older and older and older. In fact, the hackers I met here uh, could actually be uh, Walter Matthau, okay? <laughs> you have to rejuvenate yourself, and you can only do that if you tap into the resources of other countries. You have to bring important people to your uh, nation and let it undermine it. Uh, I'm, I'm, that, that's what really uh, needs to be done. Uh, yeah, yes. Oh. This is how you really look. Uh, <laughs> you, you are sad in your heart. You don't know how to let this out. You have to take drugs uh, to, to compensate your, your bad makeup. And uh, this is something that I'm very concerned of. So we don't have nothing, but we can give you hope. And our hope, not yours. Okay? Yeah. So, uh, go see for iPad. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do it. Stop laughing about that. It was actually a joke. I wanted to make fun of you, but you really liked it. Of course, you're perverts. That's, that's, yeah. I tell you what, I can have cheeseburger. That's... That is what your country is doing to other countries, really. I, I packed it into irony, and you laugh about it, but you have to cry all the time. Is this funny? No, it is not. I tell you, be prepared to be entertained, because I want to present you a problem-solving optimum that I can uh, arrange to present to you. Uh, I will do that in the form of a song. Uh, I'll try. I, 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 have, I go into the audience because in the audience I can actually read the lyrics. Uh, yeah. So, uh, let's try it. Um, some yogurt yesterday the Walmart is no place to stay millions of brands to choose but you can only lose I just wanted one pack of yogurt only one packet stupid diversification no, I just went berserk uh, screaming I want plan the economy I don't need so many products I want plenty economy a thousand products are too much yeah I watched some YouTube yesterday nothing agreeable was there to see the Nasdaq's gonna crash that system's just pure trash uh, that's not the way we do it we have Plan, plan, and we abide the plan. We have plan, plan, I want plan the economy. I just spit on less affair. I want plan the economy. Deregulation, yuck, yuck, yuck. Yeah. 
A solidarity solo. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Yes. And to the swing. They, they really do it. I like that. So, okay. Be prepared for the last couple of stances. Cash flow, cash flow, ha ha ha. I want plain economy. Profiteers are smelling blood. I want plain economy. Braver instead of hurt slavery. I want plain economy. Bretton Woods was exploitation. I want plain economy. Greenspan Adam licked my rectum. I need economy. Adam Smith was just a weenie. I want plain economy. Network is class. Best your chains. Plain economy. Ownership is just for wimps. I want plain economy. The yes man pranks are not enough. I want plain economy. It means future without an end. Solidarity. Resurrect. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. Not a plot for me, a plot for yourself and your potential. Nick Farr, bye bye. <laughs> All right, thank, thank you, Johannes. Uh, we have a, we had a lot of really awesome projects Who and stuff. <laughs> that that's that's on them. They, uh, Ambassador Khrushchev is requested that you put away his face. <laughs> and, and Maya's looking, so I should just unplug it? Like that? Okay, that's great. A round of applause for the AV guys real quickly. Okay. <laughs> All right, so as I was saying, uh, we had a lot of really awesome projects and things going on on the second floor, and they're going to be first up on the program. I'd like to introduce Darko, who's going to thank his crew from Radio Statler. Darko, round of applause. How's everybody doing? So, everyone have a good time? Now, I asked this last time, and hopefully you'll have a better response this time. Who's heard of Radio Statler? Applaud. Awesome! This is much better. So this is our third time out, and uh, we're getting even better, even stronger. Um, we just want to thank a couple of people really quick. I'd like to thank uh, our program director, Bunny Burn, our chief engineer, Nick God, our website lead, Stape, and uh, our production lead, Beach, who this was his first hope, his first time here, and he basically chained himself to a computer the entire weekend. Um, I'd like to thank a couple of few other people. Johnny Xmas uh, for chasing everybody. We all know he's good at chasing people, but... Uh, <laughs> He got us a ton of content on Friday when we were having issues with our streams from the talks. Yo, he's awesome. He is, with the cat ears. Um, <laughs> I'd also like to thank Beach and Fader uh, for stepping up first time people. They worked their asses off and uh, made sure we, everything was always handled. I'd like to thank to all the groups who participated in Radio Statler over the weekend, uh, particularly those who came in on Friday uh, at the last minute to jump in and give us some content. We had hacker spaces on, we had all kinds of groups come down. I really love that we're getting more people involved and working together. Additionally, I'd like to thank the AV team for being awesome and making sure that we always get the stuff we need, the network team for making it so we can stream and, you know, keeping us from getting killed by all of you, no offense. <laughs> the video team for all their hard work getting the streams down to us, security for all their help, Yay. the con staff and the con volunteers, you guys are what make this happen, and I mean, without that, none of us would be here, so give them a round of applause. Registration for putting up with all of us when we, you know, have difficult needs. The Chiptunes team for the awesome concert Friday and Saturday night. The 2600 staff, particularly um, Emmanuel, Bernie S, Nick Farr, Adam, everybody else who makes this comp possible and makes it so we can come and do this awesome thing. I'd like to promise you Radio Statler will be back next time. We're going to be bigger and better than ever. If you guys want to check in with us during the, you know, next two years. Go to radio.hope.net, and guess what? Radio Statler still fucking lives. Thank you. And uh, for those of you that don't know what happened with uh, Nick last night, um, there was a, uh, 
a little segue incident. Uh, we'd like to thank Nick Farr for using his head to uh, test the load rating of the floor. <laughs> We'd also like to thank him for not being dead right now, okay? Everybody, round of applause for Nick Farr and his head. So how many people went to the lockpicking village this time? Right? Awesome, no, a, a couple people who, uh, a couple friends of mine who are here for the very first time uh, learned how to lockpick thanks to Deviant and Bobak, and they're gonna come up and talk about the lockpicking village. Give them a round of applause. So yeah, one more hope, one more time of a lot of physical security folk running around and popping things open with keys and picks and everything else. We love that. We love that this is definitely one of the conferences in the hacker scene that people understand that hacking is definitely, definitely not something you do inside of a little box with wires. You, you have to do shit with your hands. You have to make metal pieces bang around and, and drop a lot of jaws and pop some eyes. <laughs> so Emmanuel heard the story of how this contest we had ended. And we, we wanted to share it with, uh, with everyone here. How many people saw there were these locks outside of the lockpick village occasionally on uh, Saturday, these little pillars of locks around the conference? What those were, that was a master keyed system. Today's contest, this Hope's contest was escalator action, escalating your privilege through a master keyed system. Matt Blaze from UPenn had published and other people have talked about this for years, but we never really knew anyone who did it physically because you need mastered locks. So we built this. And we had teams running around, comparing keys, filing and testing, extrapolating out key data, and really getting close. And it, it actually took about almost three hours till one person, Gino, and actually it was two people, Gino and his buddy, they came up, I think we got the key. And we're like, all right, well, let's test it in our top lock. Hand filed. Yeah, hand filed completely. It was great. You could do the whole contest with basically no money. You could use public tools and files all manually. And they did that. And blam, and the room goes nuts, and everyone's cheering. And after that, we had to start giving away some hints. That eventually, we're like, all right, everyone look. Like this position, you all, the tip, it's not mastered. Don't worry about that. A little while later, I'm like, all right, now everyone, if you look, all of your keys have another piece that's all the same. It's, if you, everyone starts comparing their keys. Like, oh, this has got to be a six. OK, that's OK. Then I'm giving hots and colds, and people would cut a key. And I'd be like, all right, you. There was Team Delaware, the big team. I'm like, all right, here's your key. You have four positions correct. And they're like, oh, man, all right. And they trust. Here, can you cut this for us? And they're giving us a key code. I'm like, yes, all right. Here's your key. You have three positions correct. I'm like, <laughs> shit! And the whole time, the Germans, they're doing great. They're fine. They're running around. Finally, Team Delaware comes up, and they're like, they've got it. They've got all the checks, all the notes. Everything's good. I'm like, here you go. I'm like, all right. Code, code, code. Here's your key. You have one position off by one. And they're like, oh, God, here. Just they scribble. Like, Make it a five, please. All right, and I'm letting the machine run. It's cutting keys. The Germans have now run all around, testing their work. they like, we think we have it. We think this is the working key. And of course, Delaware is there waiting for their key to come out of the machine. And we're like, all right, uh, moment. Bam, second place. And the machine's like, bing. We're like, do, you, do you want your key? Third place. But we were, what we love about the community is the Germans decided that everything was so close, instead of a $100 prize and a $50 prize for second and third, they just wanted to split it. So, and you see that. So they're still officially second place, but we love them. And we love being here with Tool. Yeah, um, every, every time we come here, uh, we're always um, just floored by how much interest and support there is um, for, for this uh, within the community. And everyone always does uh, their best to support uh, the community by uh, buying picks. And we always really appreciate that. That's the only way we're able to do everything that we do. Um, people were supporting us. People were uh, supporting the College of Lockpicking guys, uh, which donated um, some money to uh, hackerspaces of uh, people's choices. This is clearly something everyone's really behind. And uh, it's, it's always just a pleasure to, to be here and, and uh, teach people how to pick locks. So thank you very much. Thank you. You guys know there's a New York tool meeting now, right? How many people didn't know that? There's a New York tool chapter that's been like misstarted, kickstarted a few times. It meets every month, third week, third Tuesday Please of the month. Please email us. We'll get you Please on the list. Please email us. Yeah. You can come to the meeting. Come join us.
So how many people here got a chance to check out the hardware hacking area? Got to solder something this weekend. All right, I'd like to introduce Mitch, who will talk to you more about that and thank his volunteers. Give him a huge round of applause. Hey, you know, uh, Hope 6 uh, in 2006 was my first hacker event ever. And uh, I was totally floored. Uh, I was surrounded by my tribe. And I've been coming back ever since. And um, it grew into the huge hardware hacking areas that I've been setting up since. And uh, it's really wonderful. So I love teaching people what they really, uh, you know, uh, encouraging people to learn what they want to learn and explore what they want to uh, do, hopefully what they love, and uh, hopefully quit a job if it's getting in the way of doing what you love. And by the way, if you want anyone to talk you into quitting a job you don't like, uh, Mitch at cornfieldelectronics.com. So um, a lot of people helped make uh, the hardware hacking area, the Hackerspace Village, happen. And um, uh, thank all of you for helping. Uh, Jimmy was a great help, as always, and Constantine and Mary and Hive76 and Alpha One Labs and the Hacktory and Maker Bar and Hope Oak and uh, Hackerspaces helped uh, donate all these things uh, to make uh, it available for all of us. So anyways, thanks everyone for coming. It's been, I think, the best hope ever. So we had a lot of great art. The art area on the second floor I thought was nice this year. And we had, how many people were at the Chiptunes concert, Friday or Saturday night? So everybody give a round of applause to Gus, who's going to be talking about art and the Chiptunes concert. Thank you. I don't know what to say, uh, except that people kept saying to me, I was, I was sort of running around frantically the way I do at Every Hope, and uh, people kept saying to me, oh, you know, artists and musicians is like herding cats. They're so hard to work with. Nah, with like minor exceptions here and there, um, the artists and the musicians who uh, came to this uh, particular conference were just the most amazing self-organizing people. They, one of them brought me water when I had basically sweat out all the fluids in my system at the dance team, like at the dance thing. And um, you know, just everybody was completely self-sufficient and um, put on a really interesting batch of art. We had a lot of really interesting thoughts about transhumanism and about music and about um, you know, sort of visual records. Uh, so that was really lovely. Uh, the chiptune concerts, I, you know, my birthday is tomorrow. I cannot ask for a better birthday party than Hope. And in particular, I just, I never bother. On, on Hope years, I don't bother to have a birthday party. This is my birthday party. So thank, thanks to everybody for that. Um, and the chiptune concerts were amazing. Um, let's see if I can remember all of our visualists and artists. That would be Ricardo and Alex and uh, Richard and Sylvester and Paza and Tamara and Chris and uh, Jeff on the visuals and Will on the visuals and Don and I'm forgetting a couple people and I'm really really sorry but uh, I love the chiptune community thank you guys so much for coming out um, the it was beautiful to watch the crossover between chiptune artists um, fixing their equipment in the lock or in the in the uh, hardware hacking section as they were you know soldering little bits of keyboards and things like that and uh, you know ever the artists were talking to the musicians the musicians were talking with the hackers and it was just Great cross-pollination. And the other teams were so supportive. Thank you, AV, for just ferociously, like, terriers going after all of our little problems and fixing them and making the lighting even better the second day. Uh, thank you to security and registration both for putting up with my nonsensical requests uh, at the last minute. Um, thank you to one anonymous donor, without, without whom we would not have had Pazaramian all the way from Sweden, which was amazing. Uh, mileage donation is a really cool way to run a conference. If you can think of giving like airplane mileage to people, uh, your mileage tickets, that's great. Um, I must be forgetting somebody. Is there anybody I'm forgetting? Um, thank you all so much. I've been, I, myself personally, I've been unemployed and depressed in the past couple of year, months, and I want you all to know if you are also unemployed and depressed, um, you know, you're not alone out there. And I thanked Mitch for, um, and a lot of, and Robin and a handful of other people for bringing together the Geeks and Depression thing. Organizing this conference has been one of the things that kept me sane. So thank you all for being here. So did you guys make use of the passport? 
get a bunch of stamps. Cool, cool, cool. Um, we've got Rob T. Firefly. He's going to be thanking the design team that was behind this. Give him a round of applause. Yeah, um, doing the design work for this con is always a trip, and it's a labor of absolute love. Um, I'd like to thank uh, I'd like to thank uh, Frederick Guimont, who is um, who couldn't be here today, but who with whom I collaborated on this guy and uh, a lot of the other stuff. Uh, I'd like to thank Bernie S, uh, Greg Newby, uh, Mitch Altman for a lot of their great ideas that were thrown into the mix. I'd like to thank all the hackerspaces who donated uh, their logos for printing inside of this, and uh, Mitch who got this all put together, and uh, all of you guys for all your kind comments and uh, great uh, you know enjoyment of everything. Um, thank you all. So as you know, a lot of work goes into the conference ahead of time. People who are setting up workshops, people who are in the unscheduled track. Um, Aesthetics, at the very last minute, took on a lot of that, and he's going to talk about that. So everybody give Aesthetics, one of the organizers, a really huge round of applause for taking over at the last minute. Hey, everyone. How are you guys doing? Cool. Oh, you guys all enjoyed the conference? Cool. How many of you went to a workshop or uh, any unscheduled tracks? Oh, I see a few hands. Uh, more people? Okay, kind of nervous. Great. Yeah, this year was actually kind of overwhelming. There were um, a, a huge diversity of uh, workshops. There was um, the, the FOIA workshop. The one that really stood out to me, there was an aerobics workshop that was... What's that? What? Yeah, there was the aerobics workshop that was MST3K style. I'm actually not sure how that works, but it, it was freaking awesome. So. Uh, thanks to everyone who helped organize the workshop. Uh, the, the, there was just a, incredible diversity, and it sounds like a lot of people really enjoyed it. Um, so, yeah, that's, should I press it? Okay. Yeah, the other thing that I handled, uh, I worked with Cheshire to handle press, and I just wanted to mention, uh, we had uh, probably the biggest press interest I've ever seen at a HOPE conference. So, yeah, and, and thank you so much, Cheshire, for all the help that, as well. Um, I'm really not sure what prompted it, but I think it was all of you guys. So uh, thank you so much. I, we, we got inquiries from the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, Forbes. Like, okay, great, awesome. Russia yeah. Today. Oh, Russia Today, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, Russia Today. Um, but yeah, that, it was kind of overwhelming. It was kind of a, a learning process. And I, I think we uh, really appreciate and welcome all the new interest. And I, I, I asked a friend of mine, where is all this press coming from? And uh, she told me, and I think this applies to all of you, your time has come. So thank you. Now, if it weren't for the folks at registration, none of you would have been able to get into the door. So, <laughs> so I'd like to th uh, give a round of applause for Mark. We'll talk about registration, that process. And Junes. <laughs> uh, thank, I just want to thank everyone for your cooperation, uh, putting up with uh, our harassment as you uh, entered the conference, um, and making our lives generally easy as we processed uh, the well over 2,000 attendees that were here at Hope Number Nine. Um, so thanks, thanks, guys. Um, I hope that the, the ticket system uh, worked smoothly for you. I think that the, I don't think we ever had any any lines at any point, so um, uh, that went great. Um, I just wanted to thank quickly uh, Junts, uh, Mike, and uh, Mark S for sitting there with me and, and with each other the whole time, uh, making sure that there was somebody available uh, as you guys came in uh, or trickled in, <laughs> as it would be. Um, and thanks to everyone who hung out with us, made our lives a little more interesting during the conference. Um, and for those of you that surrendered bottles and cans to us, uh, thanks a lot for the free drinks. Uh, they were really good. So uh, thanks, everybody. And of course, uh, we have to give a round of applause to the security staff, Rody and all of his crew. He'll be talking more about security, helping out the guys who also patched me up uh, after my little accident. So come on, huge round of applause for Rody. It's been an interesting con. Nick? Tested a floor with his head last night. And we have a box of stuff, then it's time for the lost and stolen items. 
These are things that I have found, well, my security staff has found. Matter of fact, everybody who's in a orange shirt, thank you so much. Yeah. Every, every two years, we bring a whole bunch of people together and we have them do ridiculous things while missing talks, losing sleep. I know, I think I've had maybe about three hours worth of sleep. And, and you just, they, they're, they've been great. When I started with uh, doing security for Hope, my oldest daughter was eight years old and she's getting married in October. So <laughs> this has been an incredible ride. So back to all of this. Whoever owns these, I don't want to know what the hell happened to the rest of the wardrobe. Somebody plan on it raining in the hotel? We, we found keys. And uh, if your name happens to be Alan J. Bieber, you know, this is not a good thing to leave anywhere at a hackers conference. I'm sorry about the Ferrari Enzo I bought this morning with it. <laughs> then we have really strange items like, who would lose these? Double decadence chocolates. By the way, I wanted to tell you, this, this con I found out, I'm down to a size 34. Yay, me. <laughs> yes, there's less of me to love. People have lost wallets. Hold on. What else? Oh, glasses, I'm not sure. Well, then you can't find your way to the security desk if you don't have your glasses. <laughs> and a bottle of Budweiser that's full. Who in the hell? <laughs> what is wrong with people? Anyway, if you want to retrieve any of these items, it'll be done at the security desk. As long as we're at the security desk, if you're gonna volunteer afterwards, um, I know I brought some stuff from past cons and a few other things to give out to some of the volunteers as a thank you. Um, I would like to tell you all, it's been incredible. And watching the hacking scene develop over the last, I think it's 18 years now, plus, it's just been incredible. You guys are awesome. Give yourselves a big hand. God willing, the creek don't rise. We'll be here in two more years. Probably same crazy crew. Okay, and now we have a new addition to the lost and stolen items. Anyways, you guys have a great one. And of course, um, without Adam and the wonderful AV crew, none of you would be able to hear or see all of the presentation. So everybody, a huge round of applause for Adam. We'll be introducing AV. So to, as always, I'd like to give a huge thanks to my crew. We have tons of people here who actually volunteer, run soundboard, lights, video uh, throughout the course of the conference. All of the labor is volunteer. So we actually do all this ourselves. We don't hire a company to come in and do anything. Uh, I'd like to especially thank a few people. Um, Maya, our lighting designer, who's responsible for all the stuff you see in here now. Um, I'd like to uh, thank the students who came out from City Tech to work with us this year, uh, Courtly, Aaron, Keenan, and uh, Yamari. Um, I'd, like to, I'd like to thank Lindsay for funneling a lot of you to us um, and making sure that we actually had a solid pipeline of volunteers this year. So. Uh, for, for us, um, uh, maybe more than anyone else, the con is not, not done for you know, several hours yet. Um, so uh, you can't see it, but Skytop or um, uh, Sassman is actually almost all struck already. So there's almost no gear in there already. Nuts been done for two hours. Um, and so once, once we're done here with the closing ceremonies, we can use the help of a lot of you. So. Uh, first thing would be getting chairs stacked up, and then there's a lot of us who can help guide and direct you if you'd like to play a little bit of AV gear getting it out of here. Anyway, thank you so much to everyone, uh, and of, of course also Chris Petro, who is uh, sort of the co-head with me, uh, and make sure that we actually have the gear come in. Hey, thank you, everyone. Yeah. 
So how many volunteers do we have out in the audience right now? Raise your hand. Okay, how many people are willing to stay afterwards to help volunteer? There should be more hands. Everybody. So the person you're going to be talking to is Lindsay, who did a fabulous job coordinating the volunteers this year. Give her a huge round of applause. Hello. Volunteers are my favorite, so everyone should volunteer. So we can get this done really quickly so I can go to sleep. <laughs> So thank you to everyone who's helped out, even in small amounts. Like every little bit helps, even if you're just hanging out with me, because I get really tired and bored and cranky and need to eat. And <laughs> um, especially thank you to Not Kevin and Johnny Xmas for making me laugh a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, after this talk, we're going to take everything apart on this floor and the second floor. So if you can help out with that, stick around. We'll let you know what to do. And thanks again. And Bernie, you have a couple of announcements thanking, did you want to? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. right around for Bernie. He's got some announcements and some thanks he's in it as well. And if you do hang around to uh, help, help us uh, put stuff away, we have a lot of gifts from uh, some of our vendors. Um, New Starch Press, a whole lot of really interesting tech books. Uh, Electronic Frontier Foundation, uh, shirts and hats from them. Uh, MakerBot Industries, we have uh, a whole bunch of really cool uh, 3D printed objects um, and posters uh, from uh, seerpick.com, Seer, Seer they have shirts and uh, patches. Hackers for Charity has some shirts and patches for you. Uh, Will Lindsay, also known as V Blank, donated one of his uh, uh, Apophenia Rodave receiver kits. This is the th thing that lets you listen to the dead over the airwaves that he gave a talk and a workshop about. It's a pretty cool kit. Uh, the Hackery donated t-shirts, uh, the Free Software Foundation shirts, and a book by uh, RMS, Stallman. Um, also wanted to mention that the, uh, this weekend, the College of Lockpicking raised more than $2,000 for hackerspaces. <laughs> what they did is, what Eric did is he, uh, Eric from, uh, from uh, College of Lockpicking uh, did is, uh, offered these, uh, this pretty cool lock picking set for $30, which was, his cost was 20, and the other $10 was donated to any hacker space of your choosing. And there were over 40 hacker spaces were, were, were specified. So over $2,000 is going to hacker spaces. And anybody that's involved in hacker space knows that really goes a long way to like either paying rent or buying new tools. I mean, that's really crucial stuff. So thank you, Eric, for doing that. More awesome fundraising, J.P. Dunning, also known as Ronin, who did the talk about the uh, USB keystroke injection uh, project he, uh, he created. Um, he, uh, he did a workshop and uh, raised over $600 for Hackers for Charity. And not related to fundraising, but uh, we had a very active amateur radio community, ham radio here. We had a station over here, uh, the FCC uh, special event station. A call sign was N9H. We contacted uh, probably uh, over 15 different countries, uh, the Czech Republic, Russia, Cuba, uh, Germany, Costa Rica, Venezuela, D too many to mention. But my favorite contact, with, these are all low speed data communications between right here on the 18th floor and these respect, uh, stations in these respective countries. Our contact from Cuba um, typed back to us, uh, 73 hackers, which is like a amateur radio shorthand for uh, like best wishes and good luck, hackers. So that, that came directly from Cuba and with no infrastructure between us and them with just a few watts of power. I think that's really impressive stuff. And that generated so much interest that we had about 30-some uh, uh, people come to uh, take the ham radio exams this morning, the FCC license exams. It's like uh, federal government recognition of your technical skills. And it's like the only really government-sponsored, uh, government-sanctioned hacking out there that I know of has been going around for like over a century. Um, we have over 20 new amateur radio operators or upgrades that pass the exams, which is really impressive. It shows our community. Our community really knows their tech stuff, and uh, I'm excited to see that. So thanks very much for coming. And
How many of you guys actually saw a talk at the conference this year? <laughs> um, I wanted to introduce Greg, who will be thanking all of the wonderful people and the, on the speaker selection committee who filtered through all of the applications for talks and found a wonderful, wonderful program for you guys this year. Everybody give Greg and the speaker selection committee a huge round of applause. So there's a lot of words that we use to describe this community. It's strange to me sometimes, maybe it's not so strange, that we all spend so much time in rooms sometimes with poor lighting and uh, poorer diets in front of our computers alone. And yet we're part of this community. It's amazing. And the uh, uh, community is, is uh, passionate. The community is creative. Um, uh, words like this. One of the uh, most important words that I always use to describe what we do, though, is, uh, is open. We're open to ideas. We're open to all types of things. And of course, we opened the uh, call for participation back, uh, back a few months ago. And, um, and we got an astounding selection of talks. And I think you saw that in the uh, program. And I think, oh, I'm sorry. Actually, this is for the next, I apologize, A.V. This is actually for the next, uh, the next remarks. But anyway, we had, we had an astounding selection of uh, 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 talk submissions, and of course, uh, uh, there were a number of powerful ones that uh, that everyone went to see this time. And it's it's open is the word. We're open to all sorts of uh, broadening ideas. And so I'd like to congratulate and thank uh, uh, very deeply all of the speakers. Uh, when you think of the thousands of hours that uh, that your crew put in, then you think of the thousands of hours of volunteers. Uh, you can think of the many thousands of hours that the speakers spent preparing, collectively preparing for their talk, and also the incredible experience. We just heard about it in this last panel, decades of collective experience that, uh, that we're sh sharing, that we're seeing shared in a very open and, uh, and supportive fashion. So thanks so much to the speakers. And the uh, key here is when I say open, I don't mean we're only open to people that have been doing this for 30 or 40 years and want to tell you about the, the great stuff they've done. Uh, the Speaker Selection Committee and the process, and you saw this in the program, is open to people that are, are brand new on the scene, or maybe even possibly not so much on the scene, maybe not so uh, deeply in what you might call the hacker community, but in a, um, a different type of community, an affiliated community with some overlap. Uh, we certainly saw some of that with the keynotes, powerful keynotes. We saw that with a lot of talks. So uh, open is the uh, word of the day. And uh, when we do this again someday, make sure that you're thinking yourself of trying to get involved at that level of sharing your knowledge with the rest of us here. So thanks again to all the speakers. Fantastic job, everybody. Really amazing program. I think the most diverse program there's probably ever been an event like this in terms of the uh, coverage. And just thanks, to everybody. Um, we'd also like to thank all of the people who helped uh, make the conference possible monetarily. All of the, could we get a huge round of applause for all of the vendors who are on the second floor this year? Mm -hmm. I thought we had, a, we had a really good vendor lineup. And a uh, round of applause for Kyle, who will be introducing our sponsors. Uh, hi, uh, did anybody have fun here? Yeah, I, I'm a little nervous. Uh, I do want to um, basically thank uh, three of uh, three sponsors. I had the the pleasure of representing um, of you uh, on behalf of like 2600 and uh, and Hope, and um, that was not easy. It was a little tricky. And and typically 2600 and, and Hope haven't really op been been very open to to sponsors. So that's uh, it was new territory and uh, a bit strange. Uh, to do, but we wanted to keep it sort of classified as technical sponsors, not like just anybody with a checkbook kind of thing. Um, and it went in a lot of really, really weird and unexpected ways. I um, got a lot of uh, an interesting rejection and a lot of companies, you might notice some extra ones that aren't up here, uh, really wanted to help and they'll probably be working with us in the future. Uh, we really want to get um, more interesting, like experimental, uh, really cool network stuff, and uh, keep having like amazing lighting and, and all the all the kinds of production and things that go into uh, badges and and just just everything that makes it uh, kind of a, a unique event. Um, in particular, um, I'd like to thank uh, IO Active. Uh, they basically uh, covered the costs for all of the segways. So if you rode around on a segway, that's IO Active. Um, <laughs> 
I, I also want to thank um, NAC, uh, Net Access. They've worked with us for a really, really long time. Uh, Draghorn already spoke to that. And um, basically, they handle a lot of our uh, hosting offsite once it gets to the other side of the microwave. So uh, NAC, once again, was very, very helpful this time. So we're happy with them. And uh, one thing that's actually really cool, um, Trace Vector is a new company. They do uh, IDS, intrusion detection stuff. And um, they, uh, <laughs> they're actually uh, a new company, and that was started by Fiber Optic, who is uh, a friend of Hope and 2600, and they paid for um, half of our bandwidth costs. So we're really thankful to them. Yep. Um, I could go on and on. I really want to thank everybody for coming and uh, having a good time. I had a lot of people come up to me and say they were really enjoying it and they're really thankful uh, for, for you know, the interesting theme and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, anyway, I, I do want to ask, did anybody happen to uh, run their passport uh, under a black light? No. Really? <laughs> I'm kidding. Nobody was just like, whoa, maybe it's got black. Okay. Anyway, uh, we did put like a little uh, security feature on the passport, and well, it wasn't um, we, it was basically me, and uh, I basically stamped all of your passports with invisible ink. So if you put under a black light, there's a, there's a little smiley face, I don't know if you can see it. So there you go, that's our anti-counterfeiting. So, uh, but we really didn't have any problems with that, it was just something we put there that no one really knew about. So anyway, um, that's it. I, I could go on and on, but thanks again for coming. And uh, I think uh, Nick's going to introduce somebody uh, you might all recognize. So this is the ninth Hackers on Planet Earth conference. And how, huge round of applause. If you had a great time, give yourselves a round of applause. I, I've been coming to the Hope Conference for a really, really long time, and uh, I think we all owe a really special, huge round of thanks and applause to Emmanuel Goldstein, who made all of this possible in 2600 Enterprise. Give it up, give it up. Huge, huge round of applause. Please. I appreciate that, Nick, but it's really not true because I might have had the idea a long time ago for Hackers on Planet Earth, but you guys make it possible by, by speaking, by coming, volunteering, organizing, all the magical things that you do. I'm, I am just in awe of everybody here for, for putting this together. And, you know, we could, we could stay here for a very long time thanking people, but we're always going to miss people. Uh, and I don't want to miss the ones that are in the background, um, uh, Rob and Mary at the store who have been here uh, night and day for the last three days, all the folks that have been selling mate downstairs and upstairs now. Uh, actually, interesting statistic, we, um, we sold over 4,000 bottles of mate this weekend. <laughs> That's an American record. In Germany, they sell 13,000, but that's, they're crazy. <laughs> but uh, we, we, we have that, we have all kinds of, uh, we have Ted who has, who has uh, recorded every single talk and he's the guy really that makes it possible to, uh, to have a record of this so we can all look back in the future and, and see just how funny we looked years ago. So big round of applause for him. And I think he's still there, buy some DVDs, take some home with you, share with your friends and family and uh, show them what Hope was really all about. Uh, like everyone has been saying, um, hope is unique. I, I, I go to a bunch of conferences throughout the world, and I like to think this one it has its own special flavor. I think it always has. Uh, and we mix it up. We, we, we bring people from all different backgrounds, walks of life together. Uh, our keynotes certainly uh, demonstrated that. William Binney from the NSA and the Yes Men, uh, and just everyone else who submitted talks. We had hundreds of people submitting talks to us, and uh, so many of them are really, really fantastic. And uh, there were a bunch we couldn't even find room for, so who knows, we might have to expand even more in the future. I think we've had more people here this time than ever before. We'll, we'll figure it all out over, um, over the weeks ahead as we, uh, as we recuperate from this. 
Um, but uh, I just want to thank everybody for coming, for making it possible, and uh, we will be back in two years. I also want to thank the hotel for remaining standing. That's the best thing, right? <laughs> There is really no place like this anywhere that I can think of that has such history and magic to it, and they are so good to us, and, um, and, and we hope that you respect uh, every inch of this place and, uh, and make sure it's clean, cleaner than when we even came in. And um, I think it'll be standing in two years, and we'll be back then, and uh, we don't know what we're going to call it yet, but we'll think of something cool, and we hope you guys are here too. Bring your friends. Thank you. Good night. I also want to thank Nick for uh, emceeing and, uh, and organizing all of this because we're all kind of frazzled. We don't know what we're doing right now. Uh, but Lindsay actually is going to come up and tell us what we're doing, right? Uh, no, you don't know what we're doing either? Uh, we, well, we want volunteers to stick around and, uh, and help us out, right? Okay. Well, hang on. We'll figure this out. Okay. And thank you to all those of you who will stick around. Okay, so basically we need help to um, take down all the equipment and things on this floor and the second floor. So if you can stay around for a little while. Um, when we get closer to finished, we'll have some prizes for people who've helped us out. If you can help tomorrow, tomorrow morning, like if you're in the city, you live in the city, uh, we need a lot of help loading trucks and um, getting everything out of here from the loading dock. So if you can do that, we're gonna have some really good stuff for you. Um, we have some boxes put away just for you. <laughs> Um, and we're going to raffle off a round trip um, plane ticket on Alaska Airlines. That's pretty good. They go to like Mexico and stuff. At noon, at at noon, noon tomorrow. tomorrow. Come in at 8. They gotta be Come in at 8 and uh, we'll announce who wins it at noon, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> but if you stay tonight, we have some t-shirts and some like other stuff. It's cool, I promise. I don't look excited, but I am. <laughs> I promise, I'm excited. Where does the chairs get stacked? Uh, I don't know. Chairs get stacked center. <laughs> yeah, center just, center yeah. yeah. Um, and Gus has something to say about art. So I think if you're, if you're helping us move art or any kind of technology, really, make sure that you're talking with somebody who's been up here or somebody who's close to them, somebody in an orange shirt, figuring out where the technology goes. Because if it ends up in the wrong truck, it can be a big problem. So uh, just keep your ears out, all right? And for your next challenge, I need to get to the store right now. So let me through. Thank you. <laughs>